In this video, we're going to talk about how you can build a cybersecurity home lab in your home affordably so that way you can get engaged in all the different cool cybersecurity projects you want to get in. And you can actually follow along with some of the projects that we're doing on this channel and more. And we're going to talk about all of that right now. Now, this was actually the first video that we talked about on this channel. And we're talking about it be again because we're going into 2022 and it might be good. Uh, to try to get in on some of these things. Your cybersecurity home lab can be an absolutely huge asset towards your cybersecurity journey. Now, despite the intense sounding name and perhaps the, uh, the idealized image of a cybersecurity home lab, no, it does not have to be a super expensive server rack. In fact, my home lab is literally sitting right there. That's my home lab. And I actually have some Raspberry Pis over here as well. But you don't even have to go like that crazy. Your computer can serve as your home lab. And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But today, we really want to talk about two different ways that you can set up your cybersecurity home lab in, an, in a cheap and affordable manner so that wherever you're at financially, you can actually get started on your cybersecurity journey. Now, method number one, use virtual machines. And this can be both the most expensive and it can also be the cheapest you know, a method according to where you are at with hardware. For instance, this really requires a computer that is capable of running virtual machines. If your computer isn't necessarily beefy enough to run you know say one or even two virtual machines then maybe a hardware upgrade might be in order and that can get a little costly however if you do then you're in luck because you don't even have to spend any extra money you can get a hypervisor like Hyper-V or VMware or Parallels and you know that might not even cost you all that much money if any depending on the hypervisor that you're using and you can go ahead and download some virtual machines and get started today literally all you need to run this is a computer that can run virtual machines your hypervisor and then the different ova or iso image that you're going to use to go ahead and run your vm now what can you do in this environment pretty much anything you want for instance say you're not watching this video from a cybersecurity perspective you're just wanting a home lab. You can practice secure, you can practice coding in a nice secure environment where if you do end up breaking anything, you can revert back to a previous image and go ahead and continue your projects. If you have enough hardware, you can actually build your own Active Directory network. For instance, if you take the Cyber Mentors P Practical Ethical Hacking course, then in that course, he actually builds an Active Directory environment in a, you know, in, using virtual machines. And you can do that too following along. That can teach you base, the basics of networking, Active Directory administration, obviously pen testing, and a bunch of other super cool things. Say you wanna work with containers. I mean, that's a huge topic right now. Uh, you can work with Docker. You can work with Kubernetes and spool up all, all kinds of different containers and practice with that. Now you do wanna, now, and this is especially if you're working working on something cybersecurity related like practical or like ethical hack. You definitely want to make sure that you have your machine isolated onto a host only network if you're going to be attacking a virtual machine. You don't want to accidentally be attacking a different target. You, you don't want to accidentally be attacking an actual machine on your network and then or even worse a real machine in a, in a real organization and then get yourself into trouble. Keeping your machine in a host only network really keeps you focused on that one target. And also if you have a deliberately exploitable machine, well, it keeps that deliberately exploitable machine uh, without any access to anything else that might be able to attack it. Now, what are the pros of having a virtual home lab? Well, you can spool it up and spool it down super easy. You literally just click it and then you're good to go. You can easily swap between the different virtual machine images and that allows you to build all kinds of different home labs pretty much at any time. Really, you're only limited by the speed of your internet connection as fast as you can download different virtual machine images. And it scales with your hardware. So the bigger the machine that you have, then the more virtual machines that you can spool up and the more things that you can do in that environment. Now the cons, and this is kind of where it gets a little bit away from the affordability side. Again, you're not buying a server rack or anything. You're buying a computer that has beef. Uh, but again, if you're, if you're coming from a position where you don't have an afford, uh, you know, a beefier machine, then in order to get to that kind of a situation, you might have to go and get one. You see, cheaper computers have a limited ability to spool up virtual machines and to do certain things with them. So if you want a more robust virtual environment, you might have to fork some money to go ahead and build up that environment. It is money well spent. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It is absolutely money well spent. But definitely, you know, disclaimer up front, 
that's gonna be a little pricey. Now, price-wise, what isn't nearly as expensive is option number two. You can use Raspberry Pis. And we've actually talked all about Raspberry Pis on this channel. You can check out a full Raspberry Pi review right over here. But your requirements here for using a Raspberry Pi Home Lab is literally just the Raspberry Pi and your input output devices. Obviously, as you can probably tell, your Raspberry Pi doesn't really uh, have a screen on it. You, so you're gonna have to go ahead and get, you know, that's actually what this uh, desktop, that's actually what this monitor is for, is for the Raspberry Pis. But you're gonna have to go ahead and buy that hardware along with the Raspberry Pi. So it's not necessarily as cheap as $45, but it's not gonna be nearly as expensive as buying a brand spanking new computer with RAM. Now, what can you do with the Raspberry Pi? You can do all the exact same stuff as you can in a virtual environment. You can code, you can network, you can practice ethical hacking, you can do all those things. However, there are some disclaimers there. You are not able, you are in a different kind of architecture. And so you may not be able to use all the tools that you might be able to use in a virtual environment on a desktop and some of the different exploits, some of the different tools it may not work as easily. And so that's one issue. Another issue is the hardware is obviously not as robust. You can tell by how small it is. And so whenever you have things like password cracking, it's gonna take you a much longer amount of time to be able to perform those kinds of attacks as, if, as whenever you have a virtual environment with more dedicated RAM to perform those kinds of computations. Now the pros, they are cheap and mobile. You can literally just take it anywhere. You can fit it in a backpack, you can do whatever you want. You can also swap OS's on these too. You can re-image the SSD, you can have Windows, Linux, Mac, uh, whatever you want. Now the cons, we've talked about them one, the hardware is pretty limited, so the computing power is pretty low. And obviously another thing that we talked about was that you may have trouble running certain tools uh, being that it is on an ARM architecture. Now those are just two ways that you can make your own home lab. And if you have a different way that you made a home lab, definitely comment down below. I'm definitely interested to hear about it and like this video if it was helpful. If you're interested in building your own home lab, check out the links that down in the description. I've actually curated a list of how you can build these home labs with all the different devices that you might need on Amazon. Definitely give it a check out. Definitely check it out. Those are affiliate links, so those help the channel. So that would be a great way to support me in these videos that I'm making and also build out your home lab and tell me about it in the comments. So that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.